I'm going to tie a Goddard Caddis and I'm starting off with a size 14 dry fly hook in the vise. And the thread that I'm going to use is a 6 aught black. And I'll start this at about the mid point in the hook shank. And that will give me some visual indication where I want one set of materials to stop and another to start. I'll wrap down to about the bend in the hook and then leave my thread at the point or so. And I'll be putting uh, deer hair for most of the body. And to help that stay in, in place, I'm going to add a drop of head cement, or I'm sorry, Zappa Gap, to the threads here on the back. And then when that sets up, it'll help, again, keep that, keep that deer hair in place. I'm going to use a short, fine deer hair for this. And this is in a, a natural color. It's not dyed. I want to take off a clump that's about uh, the same size as the gape in the hook there. So I'll remove it from the hide and trim the tips. I won't be using those. I don't need to stack it. I do want to remove any of the under fur so that it flares properly. And when I set this on, I'm not going to spin it. I'll set it on so that the, the butt sections come to about the eye and the hook. And I'm just going to take two wraps and I'll pull straight down. And I'll continue to hold the back of it so that it doesn't spin, it stays in place. And when I draw it tight, when it's not going to go anywhere, then I can push all of this material back and take a couple of wraps. to hold it in place. One more clump will finish out the body so I'll come back to my deer hair and take off a size that's about the same as I did in the first batch and go through the same process of trimming it from the hide, clipping the tips, and removing the under fur. In this case I do want to spin it so I'll go through the same two wrap softly, pull straight down and this time I'll let it go and allow it to spin around the hook shank. When it stops moving it's in so I can compress it and this is where that zappa gap really helps so it doesn't slide off the back of your back of your hook. Take some wraps here in front of the clump and I'll bring the thread up, whip finish it, and remove it <clears throat> And I do that for a couple of reasons. I don't want to accidentally cut my thread while I'm trimming this body. And also when I come back in, I only use a 6 op because I'm going to be spinning or flaring the, the deer hair. When I come back through to tie in the materials in the front, I'll go to a, an 8 out or a 14 out so that it's uh, less bulky to tie in the materials in the front. 6 out it would get a little bit crowded there with your thread wraps. So now I can take my my rough cuts, start to remove some of this material and create my shape. A good straight cut on the bottom will relieve that material around the the gape and the hook. And I've found that when trimming these, sometimes the, the best work can be done off the vise. So once I've got a bunch of material removed, I'll come back through, take it out of the vise, and I'll gather up the ends and I'll hold it at about the bend in the in the hook. Then I can take an angled cut back 
on either side. And that'll help really get that get that shape quickly. In the interest of full disclosure, I am one that probably trims more than I should. So before I'm left with a bare hook, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. And now I can reattach my reattach my thread. So again, I'll come in with a, a lighter thread. In this case, I've got a black 14 knot already on spool, so I'll just reattach it. And again, if you wanted to use an 8 knot or a 70 or something like that, you certainly can. So I'll back my thread to about the midway point. Now I can tie in my uh, antenna. And for this, I've got kind of a junk uh, drawer where I put oversized hackle and just material that is scrap or that didn't fit whatever I was doing for the day and I've got a piece of furnace hackle in this case and I'm stripping off the material towards the tip and when I expose the stem what I'm looking for is uh, about a two inch section that is somewhat uniform although it's tapered try to find a two inch section that is is close in the same size and remove it and then I'll double this over try to align the the ends and I'll tie those in and now I'll tie in my hackle and now I'll, I'll do that with a regular or correctly sized furnace hackle. I'll strip away the pieces on the bottom and trim in a trim out a stem to tie in tie that back. Now you can wrap as is, but I like to throw uh, some peacock curl in there. So I'll take two strands of my peacock curl, trim the ends so that, again, they're even and good to tie in. And that'll be the first material that I wrap through. If you find that your curl starts to separate from one another while you do this, you can always twist them together and that that certainly helps. So when I get up to my thread, a couple of turns to tie it off and trim. Then I'll attach my hackle pliers to the tip of my hackle and wind it through and when I get to my thread take a couple of turns over and trim it I'll lift up my antenna and put just a slight thread dam underneath it and that'll help hold those hold those up and then I can whip finish trim the thread It looks like I caught in one hackle fiber there. 
So I'll move that. <clears throat> I'll find the midway point between these two and cut that as well. Sometimes they'll get twisted and just kind of help them help them apart. And also trim them to trim them to uh, a rough length here. And once I have those separated, I'll put just a drop of Zappa Gap, or I'm sorry, drop a head cement just on the on the threads there a bit. And that'll help keep those uh, keep those apart when it sets up. And that is a Goddard Caddis.